yourself from being insecure in a current relationship that was brought on from a past so basically what you're saying is how do I stop vomiting what happened to me in my past into my current relationship you know how do I stop treating somebody who is trustworthy as though they're not trustworthy so this is what my no more insecurity program is all about it's it's literally deprogramming you right getting you to hi from California hello my new loves um, so it's getting you to change how you think, how you feel, the behaviors you feel compelled to choose. Uh, it, it, it really is changing you right down into your core. So if you find yourself in a position where you're in a relationship with somebody who is better than who you've been with before, but you're having all these doubts, all these insecurities, and you want to change that so that you don't ruin this relationship, with somebody who finally is good come take the no more insecurity program hi from australia why am i so distrustful of my perfectly amazing and trustworthy man it could be because of past experience it could be that you just have a lot of fear right so an overabundance of stress fear or anxiety causes overthinking distrust and anxiety so if this is something you want to change do come take the no more insecurity program any advice on how to encourage my boyfriend to express his emotions? So the only way you're really going to get him to do that isn't by encouraging him, but by creating a, a space that it feels safe for him to talk about his thoughts and his feelings. So that is called emotional security. In order to create emotional security, you need to have consistency in your behavior. You need to create a relationship where you take responsibility for your emotions and you're really good at listening and not getting defensive at whatever it is that he says. That's called a safe space for dialogue. So if you want to create that in your relationship, Fix That Shit is the book that does help you get there. It's I can't give you all the tips because there's 50. It's 50 chapters on how to get there in your relationship. But it comes with you understanding yourself. It comes with your self-love. It comes with you managing your emotions and your behaviors and being able to bring up things in a way that doesn't create any defensiveness. Why a man don't propose after being in a relationship for seven years? It, I don't know in your case, my love, what's happening. If you wanted some clarity on that, we would need to do a coaching session so that I can unpack what's happening in your scenario. So the, it's the same answer. How do I trust my husband again? He's broken the trust. Uh, it does come down to really getting a coaching session. Um, I would suggest if the two of you, right, if he's trying to get you to trust him, uh, the two of you are trying to work through this, I do suggest you come get a coaching session together or come get an individual coaching session so that I can help you. Because when it comes to individual cases, right, I need to know what's happening in your life so that I can tell you what you need to hear. What are the deprogramming words? What are your scripts? Um, because we each have individualized journeys when it comes to this. How do you stop lying when you don't want to be judged? So here's the thing. You need to have a who gives a fuck attitude about being judged. Um, like guys, I used to be a stripper, right? But I wasn't your standard stripper. I was a smart stripper. Like, you know, I was an alcoholic. I wasn't a drug addict. I wasn't a prostitute. I loved what I did. Um, you know, I, I didn't do it because I was desperate for money that, you know, gaining independence certainly was the tipping point, but there was a lot of things in my life that really showed me that this was something I actually was really wanting to get into. So I, I loved what I did and I did it with love, but I didn't want to be judged by people. And for the longest time, when people asked me what I did, I didn't tell them that that was what I did. But I finally said, you know what, who cares? And what I found is that people were very receptive to my honesty. And the ones who were like judgmental about what I did, they really didn't matter at all. So you need to have this attitude where I don't care what you think. 
I'm going to be me. And if you don't accept me for who I am, that's okay. You don't need to have an important place in my life if you don't accept me. Uh, I had a hard day today. My ex's birthday today. Immerse myself in no more assholes in the podcast. Good. How do you feel? Feeling myself getting attached to my crush too early. Oh no. No kissing, no sleepovers. In a long distance relationship, and I get mad when I realize he watched. Uh, I was raised in a broken family without a mom, and you've helped me go through a lot. Thank you. You're so welcome. So let me see here. Um, oh, I'm going to open this. Okay. Boyfriend broke up with me, asked for me back a day later. I made out with someone now regretting valid. Um, so you're feeling guilty because you think you owe him something. You really don't. Um, you really don't. really don't I don't know why he broke up with you but you weren't together so if he I don't know why he broke up with you but you weren't together so if he didn't actually want to break up with you he shouldn't have broken up with you Can you have that attitude while going through court? It depends, my love. If you need help with some clarity, come get a coaching session. Uh, I, I just can't do a coaching session on a live. Such good advice. How do you deal with your man having lots of female friends? I don't. I don't. Because I pick myself a man who doesn't have lots of female friends. I pick myself. I don't. Because I pick myself a man who doesn't have lots of female friends. I pick myself the kind of man who's too busy working to have lots of people calling and texting and hanging out. Um, that's, that's how I deal with that. I picked myself a man's man, right? Um, I asked my husband, would we, would we still be friends if we hadn't gotten together in a relationship? He went, nope. And I went, really? Why? He goes, because I would have moved on. And I'm like, but you couldn't be in a relationship and be friends with me. He's like, nope, that wouldn't be okay. So that's the kind of man I like. The kind of man who says, you know what? I don't need other women in my life. I got my woman. And that's that's it. That's all I need. So how do, how do I deal with that? I pick myself the kind of man who's not like that. Um, how would you deal with that? How can you deal with that? Look at the behaviors, observe the behaviors. If there's any flirting going on, if he seems to keep them around for ego strokes, if they're not 100% supportive of your relationship, let him go. It's not their fault, by the way. Don't be mad at them. They're not interfering in your relationship. He's allowing the interference. Therefore, he is the interference. Uh, there's a guy that treats me better and wants me than there's the guy I love. I feel stuck and stupid. Come get a coaching session, love, so I can help you do the assessment on that. How do I get over his past? Stop telling yourself you owned him. Ever. You don't own him now. You didn't own him then. Right? I understand. I understand the imagination. I've been there. I've hated, like, you know, imagining my husband being with other people eventually you just have to keep pulling yourself into the present and saying that's not now that's not reality that is not reality this is reality what is happening right now who is he right now how are you together right now what are you grateful for about him right now and keep pulling yourself into reality your words help me feel more centered thank you my love Ex left me because of past mistakes I made two years ago. And I reassured him, proved myself, love grew a lot. There you go. There you go. Guys, who wants a notification when I go live? Say, I do. I'm 55 feeling. Uh, so I don't see a question here, my love. Uh, 
So if you're still feeling hurt over your past relationship, if you're still feeling pain over a relationship that you are not in, I got a book for you. It's Come Back Queen. This is the book that helps you heal your emotions after a relationship that you were no longer in. So it doesn't matter how long ago that relationship ended, if you were still feeling pain, get into Come Back Queen and start changing your mind, start changing your emotions, start changing your thought patterns. Uh, oh, I just got your black dump the motherfucker sweatshirt. I want to see. I want to see. Hello, loves. I want to see Sam. I just received the Tough the Motherfucker sweatshirt. What do you think? What do you think? Do you like it? I want to make some Tough the Motherfucker uh, v-necks as well. Come back, Queen is amazing. Thank you. X and I would be celebrating two years. Yes. So again, if you are... Uh, out of a relationship but still hurting over that relationship get into come back queen this is the book that's going to help you or come get coaching so because the reason is like if you guys need help with an individual situation should i stay or should i go what does it mean if he does this um how do i get over the fact that he hurt me like this right i need to unpack what happened i need to find out the behaviors um, and and I, I need to get into who you are so that I can direct you down the path. And I, I need to get into who you are so that I can direct you down the path you need to go down. All of my sessions are different, you guys. Everything I say at each session is different because you all have different needs and you all need to hear different things and you all eventually end up with your own script. Girlfriend and I are on the brink of a breakup because she says my childhood trauma and depression. So basically what she's saying is I can't stay in a relationship with somebody who is vomiting into the relationship instead of dealing with their emotions. My loves, I see the I do's. I'm not forgetting about you. Those of you who want a notification when I go live, click my picture up here once or twice. You're going to get a pop-up in the pop-up is a bell. Click on the bell. When you do that, say I just did. Um, so you and your girlfriend are on the verge of a, a breakup because, because she's feeling for some reason like you're not handling yourself and it's too much for her. Um, and that's a fair thing, right? Because that's something that I say to people is, is you didn't come into a relationship to be a therapist. You also didn't come into a relationship to be a lightning rod for somebody who is not managing their thoughts and emotions and instead are looking for an exterior source to channel their overabundance of stress, fear, and anxiety rather than learn how to reduce those feelings and calm themselves. Um, and so, you know, people who pick lightning rods are picking people to unleash onto, to vomit onto. If I have an overabundance of stress, fear, and anxiety, and I'm not learning how to reduce and release it, this overabundance turns into a vomit. And she's tired of that, as anybody would be, and as anybody has the right to be. So the question isn't, how are you going to keep her? The question is, how am I going to deal with myself? So we love the curly hair. Um, so that's the question. How are you going to deal with yourself? What are you doing? You need to start meditating. You need to reduce the size of your amygdala, which is stress, fear, and anxiety. You need to practice impulse control. That is keeping your lips closed before you say anything. That is thinking about anything you're going to do before you do it. That is choosing silence or going into another room if necessary instead of vomiting on your partner. That is showing gratitude for the things your partner does. That is good and beneficial to the relationship and to you. So that instead of vomiting onto your partner, you are creating space and into that space, you are then adding goodness. So if you need more help with this, come get some coaching so I can help you deal because I deal with people who experience this all the time. Um, so if you need help understanding how to navigate this, we can do this. Um, 
but this might become a pattern if you don't get help if you don't learn the tools and start applying the tools you're going to get in a relationship they're going to be tired of feeling like a therapist or a lightning rod they're going to get out of the relationship hi just popping in real quick to say thanks for the amazing coaching session today you're so welcome is that dana you're so welcome dana i love you bye how do you get back together in a healthy way do it with fix that shit there are tools in fix that shit including a healing letter this is a great re recharge to the relationship it's it's what i call flushing the toilet in essence you get all the crap out you deal with all the crap all in one shot by the way if you do this right you do it well um so you do the healing letter to just get it all out get a lot of stuff out of the way and then start applying everything that's in fix that shit to maintain a healthy functional status quo in the relationship. In other words, behaviors that are consistently functional from now on. <clears throat> We've been talking for three months. He still talks to a lot of females. Is this bad? Of course, uh, of course, right? So this is a guy, right? This isn't, this isn't a man who's like, ooh, you this is a guy who's like yay girls right so you don't want to be with the guy who's like yay girls you want to be with the man who goes oh you that's what you want so this is not the one you kiss um by the way when you say talking do you mean kissing and having sex because that's not talking that's not talking that's not talking kissing and having sex is not talking so i hope by talking you actually meant talking which is talking In your relationship with your husband, did you ever take a break? Yeah, we didn't. We never took a break. We actually broke up a few times. We broke up a few times. Oh, somebody's getting told. Oh, somebody just ordered something. Somebody's getting told. Somebody's getting told. I blocked them. I blocked them. Uh, I have too many questions and too much help even don't even know where to start come get a coaching session uh, what does it mean if you went and slept with someone right after we agreed to take a break a break is a breakup right so it means he had opportunity he took opportunity but you were not together and you have no claim to him you can't say you cheated on me because you weren't together a break is a breakup incidentally if you had gone and slept with somebody the day after, I would say the same thing about him. If he was being poopy with you about that, how could you blah, blah, blah. I would give you your script. You have no right to say, I don't want to be with you, but you can't be with anybody else. You have no right to say we are not together, but you can't go be with other people. So, uh, you know, if you guys, and you're, you know, a break is a breakup it means you're not together when somebody says i can't do this i can't be with you i don't want to be with you anymore we need to no longer be together anymore that is a breakup uh so coaching sessions it i have different options it depends what you choose so if you guys want to get a coaching session to work through like you know gain some clarity and gain a plan maybe a script whatever it is that you need uh, go to my bio, click on the link here, there's a coaching button, click on that and it takes you to a page. Follow the instructions, there's, there's three steps to booking yourself in. Make sure you read them over carefully and then follow them to book yourself in for a session. I make it pretty easy, you guys. He realized he has a fear of commitment. Would you recommend a couples therapy or just walk away? He has a fear of commitment, right? Which means um, he's not ready to be in a relationship and begin building a life. You want to be with the person who's ready. You also don't want to stay in limbo. So you can say to him, um, you have a couple options here. I'm, I'm giving you a couple options. You can do a session with this girl, Canada's dating coach. I would suggest he do it alone rather than with you. So you can say, go do a session with her. See if you can understand or work through this fear of commitment and we can be together or we just will not be together but i'm not just gonna like sit around and wait and see if you figure out this fear of commitment and ever come around 
um, until you do what you need to do. Um, there is no kissing, there is no sex, there is no sleepovers because I don't want to be in a relationship with somebody who's not in a relationship with me. Oh, but I am in a relationship with you. I'm exclusive to you. No, motherfucker, you're not building a life with me. You're not committed to building a life with me. And that doesn't work for me because I want a relationship with somebody who is committed to building a life with me. And if that's not you, that's okay. I will be okay because I will find that person. Ways to start meditating. Go to my YouTube channel. Go to my Let's Meditate playlist. Go to track number two. Start listening to that twice a day with headphones. Uh, track number one is a short tutorial. <laughs> can I just send you to my boyfriend and you can tell him for me? Sure. Book him a session. My boyfriend loves me, but he seems really scared to open up and be vulnerable. What do I need to do? Just create emotional security in your relationship. Get fixed that shit. Do everything that's in that book. Create emotional security and give him time and space to feel safe enough to, to say whatever he wants to say. Follow the tips and fix that shit to give him space to talk into. Sorry guys, if you give me puzzle pieces, I have no idea what you're what you're saying. If it's so complex that you gotta put it in multiple parts, do get a coaching session. Um, but don't give me puzzle pieces because I really can't put everything together because of the way that things kind of fly up on here. Uh, how to navigate through finances in a relationship, 50-50 or how it's best. So how it's best, right? Um, and thank you. In my first marriage, we did 50-50, right? Everything was split 50-50. Um, so I missed what you said. I do repost my lives on YouTube, you guys. So if there's something that I said that you're like, oh my God, I need to hear that again. Do take a screenshot, note what I'm wearing. Go look for the repost of the live with the same outfit. You're going to find it. Um, thank you. You guys are so sweet. Uh, so, oh, right. Oh my God. What was I talking about? What was I talking about? Uh-oh. Oh, it flew away. I do love your frequency. It was going well, but I'm struggling. Uh, if you're struggling to meditate, come get a coaching session so I can really like teach you how to start meditating. What's your name on the, what's the, my YouTube channel? The name my YouTube channel is under is Canada's Dating Coach. Canada's dating coach. My boyfriend talks about finances. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, right. So finances. Um, so in my first marriage, we split everything 50, 50. That's what worked with us because, uh, you know, he worked nine to five. Um, so we did the chores 50, 50, uh, totally fine. No problem. In my next marriage, this one here, we do not split the finances 50 50. he takes care of the finances i take care of the household it's not that i changed it's not that i was unsatisfied splitting 50 50. um it's because that's what was required in this relationship in my last relationship he worked 40 hours a week in this one he works over 80 hours a week so him working 80 hours a week and then being responsible for doing the dusting doing the dishes you know, washing the floor um, is is not viable for him. He doesn't have the time. He literally gets up, goes to work, comes home late at night, has a snack, goes to sleep. Um, on weekends, every now and then, he does watch a movie with me before going to work. Then, you know, even on Sundays, he comes home at 11 o'clock at night. So he works very long hours every single day. So he takes care of the finances because it's easier for him to take care of the finances. So I take care of the household and the meals and the shopping because it just facilitates everything. Um, so it, it does need to be equally divided. You know, if you're paying 80% of the bills, then you do 20% of the household chores. 
So you do need to divide it. My husband pays 100% of the bills. I do 100% of the household duties. My friend works long hours too, yes. My husband, he bends metal. He's a metal bender. He's a metal bender. So how when do I spend quality time with him? When I go bring, like in the morning before he leaves, we make out. When I bring him his lunch, we make out. When I bring him his supper, we make out. We have minutes together and the minutes really matter because they're sweet. Um, we have little chit chats in those minutes together. We'll, we'll talk about little things. Um, we cuddle at night before we go to sleep. We cuddle in the morning before we get up. So we really do make the minutes count. And that very deep touching intimacy during those minutes just makes the entire day feel like we are so connected. What is the finances include when you say that? So for my husband, the finances is the home, the home insurance, um, the expenses associated with the home, like, uh, you know, the, the utilities or new, um, new roofing. He also takes care of my vehicle. He, my husband has a fleet. So I, I pretty much drive whatever car I want, but I, he, he got me the newest car in the fleet. So he was like, do you want this? I was like, okay. <laughs> so he's very sweet with me when it comes to a car. He drives, he drives a beater, um, like a super old beat up Nissan. But for me, he puts me in a nicer car, which is really sweet of him. So that's what I mean. So I do 100% of the caretaking. I do his laundry, I fold the clothes, I put it in his drawer. Uh, I color coat his, his clothes in his closet. Um, uh, I buy him his new socks, his underwear. I just got him a, a, some new pants, shirts, cause Le Chateau, they're going out of business. So I'm taking advantage of the sale and I bought him some new clothes, a new uh, faux leather jacket. How did you and your husband come back together after having breakups? Um, so we, you know, we broke up not because we didn't like each other. We broke up because there was too much fighting over my insecurity. Um, and so we, we would break up and then we would miss each other. And so we would come back together. Does it ever get too much? Like, no, like for me, does it ever get too much? No, because the money that I save not paying into expenses, I, I take some of that money and I have a housekeeper. So I have help with the household because I'm not paying into bills. So I have more money in my hand. So I have an Amy. Amy comes for two or three hours once a week. Uh, so it's minimum two hours once a week, but you know, sometimes there's like some extra stuff to do that will take a little bit longer. And I'm like, Amy, do you have an extra hour? So I'll get her to stay another hour and, and take care of some extra stuff. I love that balance. Inequality, yes, not sameness, yes. Uh, I don't feel like being my partner's maid. I have two children, I also tend to. I don't feel like my husband's maid. Not one bit, not one bit. I don't resent a single thing I do for him. Uh, I, I put the toilet paper on the toilet roll for him in his bathroom. Uh, I don't resent a second of it because he's, he, he takes such good care of me. He takes good care of our home. Like, you know, new roofing, new eaves troughs, uh, make sure my car is taken care of. There's a garage down the road. If my car ever made a clink, 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 clink sound, I take it to the garage down the road. He's going to pay the bill. Uh, so I, he, my husband leaves dishes or wrappings on the table in the living room, I pick it up, I bring it into the kitchen. Socks on the floor in the living room that Jelly will grab in the bathroom and toss in the living room, I don't care, I pick those up. So he'll put his clothes on the back of the couch, I don't care, I'll put that away. I don't I don't care, he takes such good care of me that like there's so much I don't need to think about that I don't mind those those little things. Equal give and take, 100%. We are very generous towards each other and we don't score keep, right? I look at what my husband does, I go, oh, he takes such, such good care of me, I'm gonna take good care of him. Any advice for finishing a degree? Uh, make sure that if you're in a relationship that is conflict-free, because that is very beneficial to being able to focus on your degree. We've been together for 15 years. 
Um, when you are studying, choose cinnamon gum. And when he, uh, when you're studying, choose cinnamon gum. Gum. When you take the test, choose cinnamon gum so that there's an association to where you store that information. Should I have everything prepared for a first no more insecurities call? Hello, my love. Um, I have all the questions, whatever questions you feel you want to sort through. Absolutely, you can deliver those to me. Yes, yes, yes. I want to know everything. I want to know everything you want to to work through. Hundred percent. Thanks for sharing. C's get degrees. Any tips for saving money? Um, have your goals. Like, like, what are you saving money for? What is your goal? Have your monetary goal because I love the countdown, right? I love the countdown. So, um, do the countdown. Have monetary amounts and, and and write down write down that amount. And every time you deposit money towards your goal deduct it from that amount so you have a new amount you're like oh and you see that number getting smaller and smaller and smaller it's really encouraging so anybody who wants to get a coaching session go to my bio click on the link to there's a coaching button click on that to get my rates because i do have different options so it depends what you choose cinnamon gum yes test hack exactly um, but yeah do have a con like if there's any conflict in your life like just just get rid of it uh and if it's, if it's your relationship, do what's in fix that shit, do the meditation. Meditation helps you study too, helps with your focus, but really get rid of the conflict in your relationship because it gives you so much more focus. If there's anybody in your life other than your relationship that's causing conflict, just don't even talk to them while you're studying. If you need to honestly take a break from them for you know however long it takes for you to finish with your studies, then do it so you can focus on what you're doing. I honestly like once my husband and I stopped fighting I had such a superpower like I was going to university while we were fighting um and then I decided to work for myself so I dropped out of university because on on the application that I made for the position of working with me there was no degree required so all you need is capabilities uh you just need to be qualified and for me the qualification was experience and education not a piece of paper because a piece of paper doesn't actually mean that you learn something or you're experienced in the subject. Thanks to you, I started meditating. That's good. Good, good, good. What if he lies and manipulates and won't change behavior? So you're asking the wrong question. Life, life begins when you ask the right question, right? The right question isn't, what if he manipulates and lies and won't change his behavior? The question is, why are you staying in a relationship with somebody who manipulates and lies and won't change his behavior? That's the right question. What is the answer to that question? Your link tree looks so professional. <laughs> is that right? Thank you. My boyfriend left four years into a relationship because he hasn't gotten over a mistake from two years ago. Uh, so I, I don't know my love. I don't know why. I don't know why without having a conversation with you and finding out what happened and unpacking the situation. I can only do that on a coaching call. Why do men re-message you after a few months when they didn't want to date you? Because they're like, okay, so, uh, you weren't giving it to me back then, but how about now? That's what that is. Do, 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 do. Uh, guys, do make sure you follow me on Instagram because I do a coaching giveaway every single month. Next one's going to be coming up soon. Honestly, you have more knowledge and helpful advice than all the psychologists that I've worked with. Oh, my love, thank you. Unfortunately, I hear that a lot, um, but it's, it's it feels like there's a need for me, so here I am. Custom made, designed for you to help you sort through all the confusion, all the disinformation, all the misinformation. I cannot believe I've had people who come onto my page where I'm talking about no kissing for a few months saying, I'm a licensed psychologist and this is playing games, and I'm like, really? 
So somebody comes to you with the problem of picking the toxic partner over and over again, and you're going to tell them, go with the flow. Don't get to know them first. Just drop into your next relationship and hope for the best. Is that what you're going to say? I'm having a dilemma. I said before we are taking a bit of a break because, oh, yes. <laughs> Why do men use the term there's no spark when they're clearly attracted to you? So what there's, here's the thing, here's the thing. Uh, a session is one hour long. Uh, do you respect nice guys? I love nice guys, like like good men. Here's the thing, you're, what you, I don't know if what you're calling a nice guy is a good man. I love good men. Good men are unassuming, they're so respectful, they're so kind, they're so generous, they're so gentle, um, they're so helpful they're they're just they're the best i love them i love them i love them i want every single one of you to fall in love with them stop going for the flashy guy stop going for the sparkly guy stop going for the charismatic guy stop going for guys go for men men are amazing love the nice men uh i was with my husband for six years before we got married so why do men use the term there's no spark when they are clearly attracted to you? Men have a 24-7 fertility cycle. Mother nature made them eager. 24-7 fertility cycle. That means every single day, multiple times a day, they can plant a seed and make a baby. 24-7 fertility cycle. Every single day, multiple times a day, they can plant a seed and make a baby. Making the pee pee move is nothing. The easiest thing in the world is getting a man in bed. Making the pee pee move is nothing. It takes nothing. A red car will make their pee pee move. I've read articles of women who've turned into men. So trans men. People who've gone from estrogen to testosterone and they were like, I cannot believe how raging this drive is. Like a photocopier turned me on. It takes nothing to get the PP to move. When they say there's no spark, they're saying the brain didn't move towards you. The heart didn't move towards you. This is why I say no kissing for three months, because it takes nothing to make the pee-pee to move. But will his brain attach to you? Will his heart attach to you? That's what you need to find out before you kiss him if you want a committed long-term relationship. Respect from Argentina and Badboa. Telling the truth gets me in hot water. What's a good option? You showed up on my TikTok at the perfect time. My marriage has turned around for the better. Oh, my love, I'm so happy to be here for you. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, telling the truth gets me in hot water. What's a good option? Um, I don't know because I, I don't know why it gets you in hot water, right? Like I, I had a woman come on the other day and she said, he says I interrogate him. And I said, come get a coaching session. Um, so she did, we did a coaching session today. It turns out he was just a liar and he didn't like it when she asked questions about what he said he was doing and made him have to come up with more lies to cover the lie he said. And so instead of, you know, coming up with a cover story, he would just say, you're interrogating me and he would shut down the conversation with anger. So I don't know what you're saying that's getting you in hot water. I'm not going to jump to the conclusion that what you're doing is wrong. How do you learn the difference between guys versus men? Well, I met my husband and my husband is most definitely a man. My man, my man is a man, like man, like capital A, capital M, capital A, capital N, man. 
And so once I became familiar with like his code of ethics, his integrity, the way he, he carries himself, what he does, the choices he makes, I was like, oh, this, this is an interesting breed. And then, you know, working in a strip club, I was able to use my social science skills to really compare him to a lot of different males. And, and this is how I started to understand selfish short-term thinker versus generous long-term thinker. So guy versus man. Is fix that shit meant for women because doesn't it take two people to fix the relationship? It just takes one. It just takes one. So it is written woman to woman for one. My husband has never read this book. It took me to change the relationship. Once I became consistent in functional behaviors, my generous long-term thinker who loved me followed suit. Now, if I was with a selfish short-term thinker, applying what's in fix that shit would not have healed our relationship because a selfish short-term thinker doesn't care to be functional. But a generous long-term thinker who loves you doesn't care to lose you. He doesn't want you to outgrow him and leave him behind because you become functional and he stays dysfunctional. So it takes one person to begin to fix the relationship, but it starts with them fixing themselves. So don't have your focus be, I'm going to try and fix the relationship because when you're saying that, your focus is, I'm trying to fix them. Your focus needs to be 100% on yourself, what you are going to do, the behaviors you are going to choose, them being functional behaviors, and you releasing the outcome and saying, whatever happens, happens. If he follows me, great, we grow together. If he doesn't, that's okay. I outgrow him, I level up, I find a leveled up partner. Is it bad to still sleep together when you're on a break? Uh, it depends. Um, do you intend to get back together? Like, are, are, are they just, did you just give them a pass essentially? Like, oh, you're allowed to not be in a relationship with me and I'm just gonna stay convenient for you until you're you know, done with the convenience and you finally move on and then I can move on because now you've moved on, right? So if they're gonna hold you back, if they're just using you for convenience but they don't actually intend to get back with you, and have a relationship with you, then you might as well just stop it now because you are simply holding yourself back and getting in your own way. <clears throat> uh, I suffer from anxiety and overthink about everything that's causing problems with my boyfriend. So this is what the No More Insecurity program is for. If you want to undo this in yourself, you do need to come take this program. I can't, I can't fix you on a live, my love. We got it. We got to get into who you are and 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 your personal healing and the work you need to do in order to overcome and change this. If going from looking to if from looking to behavior is cheating to me, but my partner thinks otherwise, what can I do? You need to get in a relationship where your fundamental values align. You have a misalignment in fundamental values. So you need to say, okay, I understand now, unfortunately, wish I'd known this before we got together, but I understand now that we don't think the same. And I need to be in a relationship with somebody who is aligned with my fundamental value of what is cheating and what isn't cheating. We are not aligned and that means I need to leave this relationship. How do I speak to children's father about his schedule regarding the children and keep the focus there? Uh, you simply ignore anything they say be like that isn't that. Um, if you do need some help with that, come get a coaching session. Dr. Phil said the same thing. It just takes one. Ah, oh, I bought his book, but I haven't, wasn't ready to hear it. Oh, my love. How do we know if he's a selfish short-term thinker? So in No More Assholes, there are 12 character traits. Uh, you want to dive into that and grade their paper. They need to be at least a nine out of 12. <clears throat> Do 
So uh, if you guys are on a break but you're still sleeping together and you still want to get back together, make sure you get fixed that shit so you understand how to relationship in a functional way. I asked my boyfriend what he brings to the table in our relationship and he couldn't think of anything. Can you? Can you think of anything? If you ask yourself that question, do you come up blank? You don't need his answer. This is your boyfriend, which means you spent enough time with him to call him a boyfriend. You spend enough time with him to call him that. What does he bring to the table? If, you, if, if <coughs> you're in a relationship and you don't know what he brings to the table. So ask yourself this now, what does he bring to the table? If you have no answer, that's your answer. You need to exit this relationship. If you ask me <coughs> a week into the relationship with my husband, what does he bring to the table? I could list a lot of things. How much are your coaching sessions? Depends on the option that you choose. Do go to my bio, click on the link tree, click that coaching button, go check it out. Would you say it's normal for guys to send other girls pictures to each other and fantasize? Uh, no, it's quite disrespectful. Like, uh, it's disrespectful to the girls, right? Like, go on the, on you know, go on the hub, go on whatever, right? Uh, where that's what they're being paid to do. I'm by the way, if boyfriends don't go on OnlyFans, if you find your boyfriend on OnlyFans and you don't like that, you have every right to not like that because it's interactive. Um, you know, so if if they're gonna send each other pictures of girls who promote themselves for that, like on Instagram, there are definitely girls who promote themselves for that. That's one thing. If if they're sending each other pictures of girls that they know. Um, these girls are not consenting to this. So that is super disrespectful. Can you tell us what the 12 qualities are? No, you gotta get no more assholes to go find the 12 qualities. That is a trade secret. That either you get the book or you come get a coaching session and I go through them with you. But those 12 qualities I keep as a trade secret. Uh, if you comb through all of my videos, if you go through my Instagram, go through my TikToks, you go through um, go through my YouTube videos, you go through my podcast, there isn't anything you won't find. But um, if you want convenience, um, go get No More Assholes because listen guys, I want you to read this book. I want you to read this book. I want you to read about the no kissing for three months dating role. I want you to understand what you need to get with in a partner. I want you to have these 12 character traits because as you do these three months with somebody, I want you to keep referring back to this and going, ooh, I noticed this one. Ooh, I noticed this one. Ooh, I noticed this one, right? This is your guide for finding your next relationship. I want this to get in your hands. I want you to lend it to your girlfriends. I want you guys to talk about what's in here. <clears throat> I subscribe because your knowledge reminds me of biblical wisdom. Thanks, girl. You're welcome. You're welcome. How do I join? I need help. My therapist isn't very helpful. If you're looking to get a one-on-one -on -one coaching session, go to my bio, click on the link tree. There is a coaching button. Click on that. It takes you to a page. You can see the different options. You have to look at the three steps to book yourself in for a session and make sure you follow the steps. Bought it on Kindle so I can read it right away. You're so awesome. Awesome, awesome. By digging up the past, am I purposely starting a fight or exposing a pattern? It could be exposing a pattern. It could be. It depends what it is. What is the best book to start with after a bad breakup? Come back queen if your heart is still hurting. No more assholes if you're ready to move forward. My boyfriend doesn't like socializing as much as me. I like going out to eat and getting drinks, then go do it. As I showed up so low to 99% of the things that I go to. Solo to going out to the club, solo to the party, solo to the dinner party, right? 
this solo to the barbecue i show up solo 99 percent of the time i have a partner who is not controlling or insecure but is hard working so i go do what i want to do when i want to do it with the people i want to do it with and my husband if he chooses to stay home and work he stays home and works and that's okay we are okay with this so go do what you like to do you don't need to be attached at the hip all the time and when he wants to go with you he can go with you but don't hold yourself back just because he doesn't want to go do, 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 do. Do, do, do. How many coaching sessions do you usually do a day? Um, so three, three, four sessions, three, four sessions. Um, like it depends. It, it really depends. The yesterday I had one today I had three. Um, so I would say three on average. Can I use a session for my relationship and myself and split it up? Uh, yes. So like, like your, your time is how you want it. Do you want to come alone? Do you want to give it to your partner to show up? Do you want the two of you to come together? However you want it. It's it, this is your time. This is your hour. You get to, you get to have it the way you want it. hundred <clears> percent. <throat> I love having things to do that are just me. Yes. Boyfriend giving attention to other girls, he says, are just friends. I think it's disrespectful. Um, so uh, don't get in a relationship with somebody who has female friends if you don't want to be in a relationship with somebody who has female friends. Thanks for your insight and advice. You're welcome. Da -da. Comeback Queen is the book that helps you get over a breakup. What if I tell him how I feel and he says I'm overreacting and emotional? So you are responsible for your choices, right? You are responsible for your environment. You are responsible for the people you allow into your life. Don't choose a partner and then fight with them about the lifestyle they want. Choose a partner who has the lifestyle you want in a partner. You are in the wrong relationship. That's why he says you are overreacting and emotional. He doesn't want you to be reacting to the lifestyle he chooses for himself. Stop choosing somebody who has a lifestyle that you don't like. Let him go. Choose a partner who doesn't have all these female friends and you will be happier. But we don't get into relationships to control people. We don't get into relationships to change people. We don't get into relationships to have a parent-child relationship. You're not allowed to play with those people, right? That's a parent-child. Those, I, I don't want you to have those friends. Those are bad friends. I don't want you to go play with those people. That's a parent-child relationship. You want a peer-peer relationship. He doesn't like what you are saying, how you are reacting because you're treating him like a child. You're not allowed to talk to those people, right? Stop having a parent-child relationship. Let him go. Say, I love you, but I'm not telling you what to do. You're free to do what you want. I just need to be in a relationship with somebody who doesn't have all these female friends. So this isn't the right relationship for me because I'm not here to control you. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I just understand this isn't the right relationship for me. Let him go. Get in a relationship with somebody you know before you get into a relationship. I bet you didn't use a no kissing for three months dating rule. I bet you weren't aware of all these female friends before you started making out with him and having sex with him and bonded with him and thought, well, this is what I want to spend you know, my life with. But ooh, look at all these girls he's hanging around with. You didn't know him well enough before you got into this relationship and now you're trying to change him to fit you so you can feel better. And that's not okay. Let him go. Get no more assholes, using no kissing for three months dating rule, 
know who he is, his environment, his choices, his integrity, and then get into a relationship with somebody that you don't need to change. Do people want to book walk through? I'm tempted to book a session with you, but I don't know if I'm going through is worth it. Up to you, my love. Up to you. Friends. How does a three month no kiss work with long distance? Uh, I feel so attacked. The truth hurts. The truth hurts, right? Um, I know the truth hurts. I'm not I'm not here to uh, I'm not here to sugarcoat. And I'm here for I, I'm here to get you thinking and and you know if it honestly if you feel defensive I want you to ask yourself this. What is the truth in what I just heard? Because, you know, you feeling attacked, that defensiveness, that's your ego. That's your ego having a reaction to the truth it didn't want to hear. It's, it's, it's a collision of the truth hitting the impression you have, what you're telling yourself. The story you're telling yourself is, is colliding with the truth that you're hearing. So ask yourself this very important question. When you feel that whoosh, when you hear something and you get a sudden whoosh of defensiveness, I want you to go, ooh, okay. What is the truth in what I just heard? This is a life-changing question because when you ask yourself that question and you answer it with honesty, then your next question is, what do I need to do? So the next time I hear it, that's no longer the truth. If you use a no kissing for three months dating rule and you get in a relationship with somebody who has integrity and is the kind of person you want to be with, and I say, I bet you didn't know that person well enough before you got in a relationship with them, you can go, Meh, that doesn't affect me because that's not the truth. And you don't have that defensiveness to what I said. So change what you hear that bothers you so that the next time you hear it, it's no longer the truth. How do I introduce women in my life to you? Great question. Uh, share, share the pose where I say dump the motherfucker so then they'll be more open to the pose where I say this is where you gotta change I do give you a loving shake up yes what if I want to change so that I am okay with him having girlfriends come get coaching my love uh, come, come get the, the work you need to do so that you can change your mind, your thoughts, your emotions, the behaviors you feel compelled to do, like telling him he can't talk to certain people. That's what the No More Insecurity program is for. So how does the three month no kiss work with long distance? You need to get a boyfriend level attention consistently for three months, so FaceTiming. <clears throat> What's the hardest attachment disorder you can have? I don't label with attachment disorders. I don't, I don't do that because you can literally change the brain inside your skull. You can change the shape of your brain, which changes your reality because your brain is your perception center. You can change your brain. You can also change your DNA, which means you can change. So I don't need to label you, um, which is an unnecessary step unnecessary because when they when they do the attachment theories they go okay let's talk about the behaviors what are the behaviors you're doing okay these are your behaviors that are getting in your way here's your label okay so now let's talk about the behaviors that you're going to do in order to uh to be happy so me i go okay what are the behaviors that are getting in your way okay now let's talk about the behaviors that are going to make you happy to see how we got to the exact same conclusion the exact same place but we took out an unnecessary step. And the problem with that step is you plant a label on your forehead that gives you even more work because now you need to overcome the stigma you've given yourself. If you have a negative attachment theory label, you're now walking around with what you perceive to be a mental STD. And now you're gonna say to yourself, when do I need to disclose this? When should I disclose my, my attachment? To, to a person that I'm dating because it's it's a negative attachment. Should I do it on the first date or the fourth date? When do I need to tell them this that, uh, that I'm sick in the head, sick in my emotions? You're not my love. You have a, you have behaviors that are getting in your way that that we can change because you are changeable. You can change your brain structure, which changes how you feel, which changes your reactions, which changes your behaviors. If you go from depressed to not depressed, you literally change your DNA code. 
So you are so changeable that giving you a label is not necessary. You're not sick, you're changeable. My best friend is getting involved with sketchy guys. What's the best way I can help? My love, you get them no more assholes. You get them no more assholes. I know you're right. I just didn't want to hear it. I'll ring that bell for you one day, my love. Da -na -na -na. Is it okay to not give someone the benefit of the doubt because you want to avoid a potential toxic relationship? That's what the no kissing for the almost dating rule is all about. Is, you know, like, let them prove themselves. And if they don't want to, if showing you who they are is too big of an obstacle, man, am I ever glad I didn't give you the benefit of the doubt? Am I ever glad I used a no kissing, no sex, no sleepovers for three months dating rule? I never heard better words spoken. Thank you. Ah, this is cute. I I know this is about dating, but this made me feel better about... Um, <laughs> this is adorable. Oh, you guys are sweet. You guys are being kind. Should I be concerned if I ask my boyfriend why he seems angry and he tells me I don't want to see him angry? Why he seems angry and he says I don't want to see him angry? Um, I mean that doesn't sound I don't I don't know. I don't I don't know what's going on. I think you would need to get a coaching session for me to like, you know, unpack and do an assessment of what's happening in this. Is it better to get the package for the sessions if you think you'll need more than one? Yes, my love. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, because it keeps it keeps you on momentum, and momentum is good. It's a lot easier for me to teach you what to do next. Um, and you know, keep you from vomiting, for instance. Like you use one of your sessions because because something happened. You need some perspective, you need some help, you need an ASAP you know you got this you're like okay i'm i'm going to i'm going to do this so that i don't vomit into my relationship i don't i don't i don't go backwards right because you will if you start applying what i teach you then you will see change and you're going to get to a point where it's like ah i don't want to undo the goodness i've created so you use your session for a sticky spot to get your perspective and your tools what you need to do next rather than navigate the sticky spot by falling back into dysfunctional behaviors, having a vomit and a fight, some things were said, some things were done, and now we have to undo this. So getting the package is really fantastic for keeping momentum going and building goodness on top of goodness on top of goodness, because these are building bricks in your relationship. And that's what you wanna do is you wanna start building things in a really nice, good, strong way. <gasps> Got back with my ex, but he doesn't want me to be close to my family because him and them are not on good terms. Red flag? Absolutely. Absolutely red flag. Um, huge red flag. That's isolation. That's an abusive red flag. No, 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 no. Uh, that, that sounds something like an abuser would do. If you want me to, you know, have a, a clear assessment of what's going on, I would suggest a coaching session, but at first glance, what you just wrote there, that doesn't sound good. My boyfriend is willing to try therapy to save our relationship. Should I stay and see how it goes? Come get sessions with me and see what happens. Let's see what happens. Guys, who wants a book walkthrough? Who wants a book walkthrough? Uh, do you have a lot of therapists disagreeing with what you say? No, I have a lot of therapists and psychiatrists and psychologists uh, agreeing with what I say. I wrote, I wrote eight books. I wrote nine. I wrote nine. Number nine is coming out soon. Um, so, so the thing that you have a lot of therapists disagreeing with what you say. Every now and then, I get somebody who challenges me. Um, on, on that aspect, like you're not licensed, uh, you don't have a degree, 
Um, and I'll, I'll take that and I'll, I'll actually make a TikTok out of it and I will let people comment. And I have a ton of people who are licensed, who have degrees, who say, I follow her because I learn from her. So yeah, three months without kissing seems impossible. There you go. So, uh, here's the thing. People who think that impulse control is too big of an obstacle are generally people who get into the wrong relationship over and over again. So if you want to get with a good partner, you need to be with somebody who practices impulse control, right? If you don't practice impulse control, don't be surprised if the person you get into a relationship with doesn't practice impulse control. So, oh no, my boyfriend is liking, commenting, following, DMing other girls, Snapchatting other girls. Oh no. What do I do now? Well, my love, you you didn't practice impulse control, so you got in a relationship with somebody who doesn't practice impulse control. Oh no, my husband, my, my boyfriend would rather play video games and go work and build a life with me. What do I do now? Well, my love, you didn't practice impulse control. And so you got into a relationship with somebody who doesn't practice impulse control. They do what I, you know, they do what they want when they want, and who gives a shit what you think about that? So, you have to be what you want. Do you want to be with somebody consistent and steady? Then show that you are consistent and steady. But, you know, consistency is something that only displays over time. So use time and space to vet for consistency and be consistent yourself. But if you're going to get into a relationship with a stranger, roll the dice. There's That's your choice. That's 100% your choice. But don't come over here here and complain about what you got because what you got is a result of your decisions. Time frame to tell men you don't kiss for the first three months before they move in for a kiss. Before they move in for a kiss. So you might tell them on the first date or the second date or the third date. Definitely tell them by the end of the fourth date because they're going to wonder how come we're not kissing yet because culture says we should be kissing by the end of the fourth date. So ASAP because you don't want to have the moment where they move in for a kiss and you're like, oh, oh, actually, I need to tell you something. And because then what you just did is you rejected them. You don't want to reject somebody. You want to have a conversation about your goal, which is I want to commit a long-term relationship and your plan for achieving that goal. I'm using a no kissing for three months dating rule to choose the right partner. What age should dating start? Um, it can start as early as 12, 13, 14, but you never, never go faster than your pace. Never let anybody ever pressure you to go at their pace. You always go at your own pace. If you're wondering how to get a man to open up and be more vulnerable, you have to get fix that shit and do what is in that book. You have to create emotional security. It's the only way you're going to achieve that. That hit a sweet spot. Good to know. I want the package, but I don't know which one I need. I want to work on my relationship and myself. So uh, it it depends if you... Like, like, it depends how much conflict you have. If you, if you think you can go from one, one session to the next, like let's say you space them, you know, a week or so apart. Um, if you think you can have relatively little conflict in that time and do your homework and be able to deescalate yourself, then you don't need to get the package plus support. But if there's a lot of things going on, then you do want to get the package plus support because when those things pop up, we want to nix them before they turn into a bigger problem. Why can't you figure out who somebody is while you casually date and kiss? Because there's a chemical released in the kiss called phenylethylamide. Everybody's lips secretes a chemical that doesn't do anything to them till it comes in contact with another set of lips, a combination when the lips come together creates phenylethylamine. That is an aphrodisiac. It's also an amphetamine. It's also an antidepressant. In other words, if you were 
on an antidepressant, an amphetamine, and an aphrodisiac at the same time, all these feelings that you're feeling, like you make me feel excited, you make me feel hot and flushed, you make me uh, feel really happy, that's not based on who they are, that's based on the chemical reaction. You need to not have this intense chemical reaction to actually be able to assess who a person is. If your relationship doesn't work out, yes, and just working on myself, exactly. Uh, if your relationship doesn't work out, then I would say the just the the no more insecurity program would be the one that would that would be for you because there's no chance of vomiting into the relationship. But if you're trying to save the relationship, I would go to the package plus support um, to get that in between session adjustment that you might need in order to make sure you don't go into a full-fledged fight um, because if you can start building goodness in your relationship before the relationship ends then you can start elevating it and saving it but if if the relationship has pretty much already crashed and burned um, then do the work on yourself so that you don't take this and bring it to your next relationship and have it implode all over again at some point, the cycle needs to stop. Guys, does anybody want a book walkthrough? I started at 14, yeah. You can start at any age, but you always go at your own pace. Your own pace. My boyfriend is struggling with the idea of meeting my friends due to social anxiety. Is this a bad sign? Yeah, because he lacks confidence. Uh, I wouldn't be in a relationship with somebody who lacks confidence. Like, there's just, like, this is meeting friends. Like, how low-key can that be? What else will he not be able to rise up to, right? So I would not, this, he, he lacks strength. He lacks capability, um, right? He lacks confidence. And this is a difficult, you know, like, this is a wounded bird. Baby girl, put the wounded bird back on the sidewalk and walk away get in a relationship with somebody confident and capable because you can build a life with that person you can't build a life with somebody who's incapable of meeting people so um i would i wouldn't stay in this relationship my love he he has problems he needs to deal with but you're not a therapist don't stay to be a therapist um i would walk away from this one this this is this is too much damage for you to have to deal with He's so good to me, but I'm fighting the good feelings. Your mantra. Yes, goodness, thank you. I accept you. Get fix that shit, my love. Get fix that shit. Do what's in that book. Reduce your anxiety or come get coaching. Talking to a guy from dating app. He rescheduled our first date to hang out with friends. Red flag? Yeah. 100%, 100%. Best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. Goodbye, motherfucker. You weren't excited about seeing me? Goodbye, motherfucker. How long should you date before getting married? Two years, three months. Do, 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 do. Walk through on fix that shit. How do I get my boyfriend to do more around the house? We work the same hours. I seem to do way more. So take 30 days. Write down who pays what. Every single thing. Don't miss anything. Because you're going to have a board meeting after 30 days. So for 30 days, you note who pays what. If you guys go out for dinner and he pays, you note that. If you guys go out for dinner and you pay, you note that. If you guys go out for dinner and you split the bill, you note that. Every single thing that's paid, every single bill that's paid, everything that's paid for the course of 30 days, you write down who pays what. Over the course of 30 days, you write down who did what. 
every single day who did the dishes, who did some dusting, who, who cleaned a toilet, who fixed something in the apartment, who did a renovation. Every single thing that's done gets noted for 30 days. I want you to examine it after 30 days. If there is an imbalance, you address the percentage of the imbalance. I've noticed that I pay 50% of the bills, but I do 20% of the household duties. I need to either pay 30%, I pay 50% of the bills, but I do 80% of the household, du household duties. So I need to pay 30% less the bills, or you need to do 20% more, or 30% more of the household duties. Uh, sorry, numbers don't fit in my head. You guys know what I'm talking about. Um, and if you don't agree to do this, I need to leave this relationship because I won't be in a relationship where I feel taken advantage of. I'd love a book walkthrough. Do you have a good relationship with your husband's kids? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I just want to fix that shit. Yay, my love. Okay, let's do a book walkthrough. Let's do a book walkthrough. Okay, so come back queen. This is a book that helps you get over a breakup. Did I just, yeah. This is a book that helps you get over a breakup. If your heart is still hurting from your last relationship, doesn't matter how long ago it was, um, this is the book that's going to help you heal your heart. You lies leave me feeling empowered. We can't wait for fix that shit. I love it. Love it. Maybe encourage coaching session than dumping. Depends on the situation. Depends on the situation. If it looks obvious to me, right? Should I stay with a serial cheater and try and make work? No. Dump the motherfucker. Uh, so you're talking about the person with social anxiety? Sure. If they if they want to come get coaching to fix that, absolutely. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. But, you know, be with people who are confident people. Be a confident person. Be with somebody who's confident. Be a confident person. Be with somebody who's confident. I used to have social anxiety. You don't need to sit in that. So, Fine, if they want to get help for it, absolutely. If they're actually going to do it, get them to come get a coaching session with me. I used to be a wallflower. I used to have social anxiety. I overcame it. But here's what I never did. I never said, I'm too scared to go meet people. I showed up to parties where the only person I knew was a person who brought me. And yeah, I stood by the wall and my stomach was in knots and I broke out in cold sweats and my mouth was dry. But I didn't say no to the next party. I still showed up. So... Be with somebody who has courage, even if they have things they need to work on. Um, and if they're willing to work on it, great. But if they're just going to say, I don't want to go do things, and that's part of the problem that she has, they fight about it. I don't want to go do things. Um, oh, no, that was someone else. Um, but if he doesn't want to go do things because of that, then she shouldn't stay in that relationship. Don't stay with somebody who doesn't address their issues. Do not stay with the wounded bird. If, if, don't stay with a wounded bird, guys. Like, don't do it. You are not responsible for fixing people. You are responsible for fixing yourself. Okay, come back, queen. Book that helps you get over a breakup. Then we move on to No More Assholes. This is a book that's going to help you find the right relationship. Uh, make sure you get with a generous long-term thinker, not a selfish short-term thinker. Make sure you get with someone confident, not with somebody who lacks confidence. Uh, somebody who is supportive instead of somebody who holds you back. Uh, once you have that partner, After the First Kiss is a book that helps you transition from the courtship phase to the reality phase so that you don't have uh, insecurity or as little insecurity as possible because there is a transition, there is a change, there is a shift. And if you understand that there's a shift, then you don't go into the state where you, you say to yourself, I'm not important because you're not doing the same things. Everything changes, you guys, and you need to be able to roll with those changes. Uh, Fix That Shit is a book that is going to help you overcome fighting in your relationship, any conflict, any vomiting. Uh, if you guys are fighting, do get Fix That Shit so that you can learn how to relationship in a functional way. 
custom made goes really well with fix that shit. If you are codependent, if you are upset that your partner um, doesn't give you all of their spare time, if you don't, if you don't like the idea of them being balanced, you know, there's work and there's you and there's me time and there's friends and there's hobbies. If that upsets you, if they're not with you and all their spare time, do get custom made because you need to fill up your spare time with your purpose and you're not doing that. You're making your partner your purpose. So custom made is going to help you figure out what your purpose and your passion is. I also teach you how to monetize it so that you literally start getting paid doing what you love. Dating 101, this is a textbook. Um, this is right here. This is a book that uh, talks about the drives, behaviors, and emotions behind love. There is no swearing. So parents, this is safe for your teenagers. Uh, Fake Love Need Not Apply, How to Avoid Posers, Losers, Scammers, and Predators. That is a free book. If you click the free book button in the link tree in my bio, you get it as a free ebook. I also have worksheets under that button, by the way. And guys, those of you in a long distance relationship, uh, there is a, a free long distance guide that you can download in the link tree in my bio. Uh, by the way, Fix This Shit is now an audio book. You can get it in the link tree in my bio only, exclusively through there. Uh, say yes to goodness. This is how to live a happy life. 10 areas of your life that affect you. This is 10 steps to a complete and happy you. Uh, you will love this book. This is such a perfect companion to all my other books. You can get all my books on Amazon or pretty much anywhere you buy books online, but you can occasionally find sales on Amazon, which is really great. How do you fit taking care of the kids into comparison with him working? So your kids that you make together, this is 100-100. Childcare is 100-100. Can the relationship recover? after cheating um it can if you both decide to there is work involved yes we don't like insecurity oh people getting freebies love it can a selfish short-term thinker evolve into a long-term thinker if they want to what book did you just say which one was it say yes to goodness was it fake love need not apply? Is there any sense to being exclusive if you're not in a labeled relationship? No. No, you are single until until somebody commits to building a life with you, right? I'm single. I'm single uh, until we are in a committed relationship and building a life together. What kind of conversation about not having kids be like if the other person is still indecisive? Um, hmm. Well, you know what? You should tell them to take a year to research it. Say, you know what? Why don't you take a year to research how much it's going to cost? Um, also, ask yourself if you have a child that... Um, you know, basically is bedridden and in a diaper for the rest of their lives. Are you willing to basically have a baby for the rest of your life? Um, like, are you, are you willing to step up and do that? Um, are you willing to sacrifice the money? Are you willing to sacrifice the time? Uh, talk to parents, like take a year and ask every single parent that you come across what's the best part and what's the worst part. Do your research, do your homework, do your thinking and, and decide what is best for you. <clears throat> I feel like one session for my relationship would be good and then I need the no more insecurity. I just got fixed that shit. Planning to use it to make our great three-year relationship even stronger. That's so lovely, my love. What made you the person you are today? Oh, man. It started with my mom being... Uh, ab abusive honestly it started with my mom being abusive um, because it really it taught me the cycle of abuse which is an important lesson to have how you can be part of the cycle how you can perpetuate the cycle um, by choosing abusive people continuing to choose abusive people by being an abusive person so I really do understand the cycle of abuse 
um, which how, how that can lead into disastrous relationships because of reduced self-esteem. Um, so there's, there's that. And then, you know, finally choosing somebody who's right for you, but still not being the right person and then needing to learn how to become the right person. So in addition to my experience putting me in so many positions that I needed to get myself out of, just like you guys are in, in addition to that, being able to understand your journey, because guess what, been there, done that. I also have a very curious mind. My mind is very geared towards social sciences. It, it's geared towards understanding other living beings. Uh, so sociology, psychology, anthropology, biology, relating to how we interact with each other, spirituality, how we can connect on an even deeper level. Um, all this comes very naturally to me. I'm drawn to it. I love it. I devour it. I study it all day long. So when you mix experience in evolution, personal evolution with social sciences, so understanding why I was able to personally evolve by using science like meditation, um, it just really all comes together in a really great way. And I'm able to facilitate all of your learning and all of your journeys and get you to where you need to go faster. One thing, like a word that I use a lot is efficient. I'm very efficient with how I do my sessions. I'm very efficient with how I guide you to the thought patterns that are going to work for you. I'm very efficient at how I teach you how to use your homework so that it feels easy for you. And I know the easier I make it, the more likely you are to do it. And that's one of my talents is I make it easy to evolve and grow and become a better person. Uh, does something happen to you for you to respect yourself this much? I think I've always had a healthy dose of self-respect. Um, I, th I think that's that's part of of what I have in me, but I needed to step into it. I let people walk all over me. I let people take advantage of me. I let people hurt me in many different ways. And eventually I stepped into my power. And I think we all have this power that we can step into. Kids are expensive, Michelle. She knows. That's why I stopped at one. <laughs> How can you slow things down after moving too fast? Say no kissing, no sleepovers and set a date. No kissing, no sleepovers, no sex until this time. What is the time? Speaking of time. 11.35. Yes, Jessica. Jessica got an audiobook. Is it okay to be bad sometimes? Depends what you mean by bad. I'm married. Uh, my loves, I'm going to go, I'm going to go, I'm going to go head out. I'm going to go head out, my loves. So um, for those of you who want a coaching session to clarify whatever issue it is that you're facing, do go to my bio, click on the link tree and, and go ahead and, and follow the instructions on that page that it takes you to to book yourself in for a session. Um, if you want to get into my books, hit up Amazon or anywhere you buy books online. Go follow me on Instagram because every month I do a giveaway for a free coaching session. Uh, there's a bunch of free stuff for you in the link tree in my bio, so go check it out. There's a free book. There's a free long distance guide. There's a meditation resource button that has a free manual that you can download. Um, oh, if you want an audiobook, Fix That Shit is now an audiobook. You can only get it through the link tree in my bio. I am interesting in an original. We are all interesting in original though. All interesting in original. Guys, if you've read any of my books, please go leave a review on Amazon. Um, if you're reading one now, when you're done, go leave a review. If you don't want to write words, then just leave stars. I always, always go look for this, you guys. Um, always go look for this. So I really appreciate it. My love language is words of affirmation. So if you leave stars or leave words, your Amazon reviews mean absolutely everything to me because it tells me you enjoyed what I did and that makes me feel really good. Still laughing at the new six love language physical service. Yes. Yes. All right, my loves. Good night. Mwah. Have a good night. Make sure you get a good night's sleep. So much love for you. Good night, my loves.